Hello Salem, I'm your mayor Chuck Bennett and back, uh, back here to visit with you about some of the news and information and the great things happening at the city of Salem and in our community. We're past the one year mark, boy time flies, of the COVID-19 pandemic and although it's not quite over, I can say that I am pleased that we can continue to offer support and funding to our local businesses that have experienced such negative economic impacts. A few examples include since June, we've offered four rounds of grant programs to small businesses and nonprofits. And in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, the city distributed personal protective equipment to nearly 200 businesses. And the city quickly moved to make it possible for downtown restaurants uh, to provide outdoor dining using on-street parking spaces. That unique idea helped our pandemic impacted restaurants and coffee shops to continue doing business uh, while meeting distancing requirements. Uh, frankly, I think we'll see it continue for a while. Now, how about a big pat on the back to Salem's first responders and work crews who were extremely busy dealing with the aftermath of Salem's historic ice storm. I continue to be impressed by our city's resiliency and work ethic. Many thanks go to Salem residents who work to clean up the city using their own equipment and their own strength. In just under four weeks, we've collected a total of 19,238 trailer loads uh, and then hauled them away from our to our free community debris collection sites. And speaking of those sites, don't forget that the collection site at Gear Park is open until March 14th. So please take advantage of it. Kudos to our local contractor, tree crews, parks and stormwater operations crews and others who work tirelessly cleaning up debris piles, dismantling large logs, down trees and cleaning parks and paths city, and city streets. We know these efforts will continue into the spring as we were all work to recover the landscape our, and our really precious tree canopy. Last week, I also had the honor of presenting my fifth State of the City address. It's an opportunity for me to share how our city is doing, where it's been, and a look at some of the places it's going. If you missed it, you can still watch it thanks to our friends at Capital Community Media who have it available on their YouTube channel and broadcast uh, several times a week, you can find it using the web address that appears on your screen. Uh, today, I'm really pleased to be able to speak with one of our new city council members, Trevor Phillips. We're going to chat a little about his new position. Uh, he represents the residents of Salem in Ward 3, but we'll also talk about his uh, real life job as a local emergency room physician. Well, Dr. Counselor Phillips, uh, we're so happy you're on the council. Uh, give us a little bit on your background. Uh, I sort of summed up two pieces, doctor and counselor, but talk to us a little about where you're from and, uh, and your ward. Thank you so much, Mayor Bennett, for having me today. I'm really thrilled to be able to do this. Um, so, uh, you know, my name's Trevor Phillips and I'm uh, an emergency room doctor. I work here at the Salem Hospital. Um, I've lived in Ward 3 for the last 12 and a half years. Um, I grew up down in Southern Oregon, uh, but uh, I met my wife at Linfield College, wow. uh, did my training at Yale University of Medical School, and then my, my specialty training in emergency medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina at the University of North Carolina Hospitals. And wow. then my first real <laughs> job, my only real job is here in Salem. Is that right? Yeah. Why Salem? It's a great place. I mean, yeah. come on. We all know this is a special place to live. Uh, it's the only home my kids have ever known. Um, yeah. They were both born at Salem Hospital. So, oh. yeah, it's a great hospital. It's a really good place to practice emergency medicine. Well, it certainly has made a national name for itself in cardiac. Uh, it's the, what, the biggest, emerg busiest emergency room on the West Coast or yes, something it, like that? Yes, it's like the busiest emergency room between, I think, uh, Seattle and maybe San Francisco, possibly L.A. Wow. Uh, with over 100,000 patient visits per year. Gosh. Arguably the best emergency room no, I, in the I, state of Oregon as well. <laughs> well, I would hope you put that in. Yeah. I, I suspect that's true. Having been there, uh, when I fell and cracked my head on the ice, trying to ice skate uh, 
uh, I had a chance to go through it. What's going on in Ward 3 that brought you to uh, running for the councilor and in the city? Yeah, so um, when it comes to Ward 3 specifically, uh, like many of my uh, neighbors in the Morningside Neighborhood Association area, um, we've wanted to see some improvements along Reed Road. Ah. And it's been really fun um, and interesting to work with city staff to see how one goes about doing that. Um, there's some unique aspects of that. It qualifies for some district development funds. So just kind of learning that process and, and getting it identified as, you know, a, a way to fund, you know, potential improvements. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been good to see how that works. Beyond the Ward 3, um, you know, every single shift as an emergency room doctor here in Salem, I'm caring for community members who are living with homelessness. Yeah. So, you know, that got me interested uh, in serving on the Downtown Homeless Solutions Task Force. Um, and I've been a proponent like yourself for the Sobering Center for many years now. So those are kind of some of the reasons why I chose to run for Salem City Council. Well, that's great. I, I really uh, appreciate the, the real expertise you bring to the discussion of uh, a whole range of issues, but one that obviously has dominated our community and the nation has been COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic and then the response to it. Uh, and uh, one of the things you do, if people don't watch council, they should because they get a Dr. Phillips update uh, on what's going on. Talk to us just for a minute about what's going on, where we're headed. Uh, we're now getting uh, vaccines through Salem Health. What, what all's happening right now? Thank you for that outstanding question. So, um, you know, things are looking better. I mean, the COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, is very real and it's definitely had, you know, a negative impact. I mean, the, the last 12 months have been historic and not particularly for good reasons. Um, that being said, we're on the better side of a mountain. You know, we had the winter surge, um, but we're so much better than we were, you know, back in December. Great. Um, so things are looking up. And, and as I said at city council meeting during the council comments, we now have three vaccines that are safe and effective for prevention of the COVID-19 illness uh, that have been authorized for use in the United States of America. So, you know, uh, as much as I'll remember being sworn in for Salem <laughs> City Council, I'm gonna remember that day because it's the day I got my second uh, vaccination for COVID-19. Is that right? Yeah, as a healthcare provider, you know, is one of the That's right. first few people to get vaccinated. Um, and it's just, it's so fantastic to be on this side of that process. I'll bet. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here and, you know, answer any questions uh, that people have, you know, simply speaking about the, the vaccine or, or, or just, you know, general recommendations. Yeah, I, I, I am excited that you got your, your uh, vaccination. I'm one of those who hasn't yet and I'm uh, 72 and I can't seem to get into line. What's going on with trying to get into line to make my uh, uh, create my opportunity to come in. Yeah, so scheduling appointments has yeah. been challenging and it's, it's not only because of the supply issues. So this is a brand new process, doing this ramp up of a massive vaccination distribution process for every single person in our country. I mean, that's ultimately the goal. Um, and you know, we initially thought that it would be available by you know, maybe July 1st for every single person in the United States of America over the age of 16. Now it's looking like, you know, President Biden announced that we expect that number to be really May 31st. Wow. Um, so at that point, you know, in any state in this country, you should really have access to it. Um, some states, they're going to just take away all of the, you know, health care versus um, other at risk community members. Um, those kind of designations that make it a bit more complicated. Uh, you know, already, like I think in Alaska, they've removed all the um, those restrictions. Now, speaking locally, which is what I know a little bit more about. Um, I would highly recommend that people go to like the Oregon Health Authority website or the Salem Health website. Um, it's so much better if you schedule like in advance. Okay. Um, and you know, if you don't have access to the internet, the internet's the quickest way to do it. If you get like a MyChart appointment, um, it's, it's a much more streamlined process. Uh, that being said, there are phone numbers. If you call in advance, um, you know, you can find if they have availability for new appointments. Now, just I heard you speaking about the um, the ice storm that we just had a few weeks yeah. ago, and that really impacted distribution of vaccines all along the West Coast. OK, so we had a, a decrease in the supply because of that. And I think now with the combination of those issues and supply being worked out, as well as a new vaccine being available, we're seeing a lot more supply. And once we get more supply, 95 to 100 percent of the issues with getting appointments are going to go away. Oh, that's excellent. Well, that's very good news. And I think. Uh, uh, I, I hope that uh, folks who are watching this will come 
each each Monday that we're meeting and get your update because they really are helpful. I have found it just personally uh, enlightening to understand what's going on. Uh, otherwise, I don't want to run into you because I don't want to run into the emergency room again. But uh, thank you so much for your service to the community. We really, really appreciate you being on the council, in the emergency room, raising your family here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, if you, if, could I just say one more thing? Just sure. Keep it really simple. Um, you know, just keep wearing a mask and following local guidelines. We're not through this yet. Things are looking better. There's real hope on the horizon. But now it matters just as much as it ever did to keep wearing a mask, doing the social distancing. And when it's your turn, get a vaccine. Wear a mask, social distance, and get the vaccine. Yep, when it's thank your turn. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us.